Hi. One of the good things about the US election is how the viewing figures for mainstream media dropped so significantly. CNN and MSNBC lost half of its viewing figures in key viewing areas, and the owners are looking to sack huge numbers of employees and maybe sell off the stations, presumably at a car boot sale. Time magazine and the Washington Post have lost many readers, and both the billionaire owners of the uh, of Los Angeles Times and the Washington Post stopped their editorial boards from issuing presidential endorsements, with the Post owner Jeff Bezos saying that this was a principled decision aimed at rebuilding cre credibility with his readers. Though his timing just before election day just made people angry and tens of thousands cancelled their subscriptions, according to NPR. And also what he didn't mention was that the Post lost, lost half its audience between 2020 and 2023, along with $77 million last year alone. The last year that a majority of Americans had trust in the mainstream media was, according to Gallup survey, in 2003. But it's, it's as if MSM in the US didn't understand and doesn't understand that to have a good business model, people have to believe what you say. They simply don't anymore, and no wonder. You don't go back to a doctor if he keeps giving you the wrong medicine. They know they're lied to constantly. And the overt support from the pundits of, of mainstream media in the US for a lame duck candidate and a senile old dodderer was probably the last straw. But here's the thing though, have they learned anything from it? Of course not. That's like asking Tony Blair and Alistair Campbell, I now think of them as smirk and sneer, to take responsibility for, for, for significantly helping to engineer an illegal war that cost over a million and a half lives and unleashed a global wave of terror that's still expanding. You know, that's never going to happen. And I mention those two war criminals because it's relevant to the American mainstream media. In both cases, these are people who cannot take responsibility and who have no self-reflection, who think that reality is something they make up to suit their own delusional wishes. They aren't just divorced from reality, they have a self-imposed restraining order on it. Now, what's psychologically interesting about this is that with Blair and Campbell and, and many people in the US mainstream media, what they're exhibiting are classic forms of psychopathic and sociopathic disorders, a lack of self-awareness and a lack of empathy. And they're also the epitome of narcissism, self-absorbed, grandiose, exploitation of others and lack of empathy. They're impervious to criticism. In the US, the narcissists on MSM blame the election result on everyone and everything uh, except themselves. The psychopath and the narcissist can never learn from their mistakes because they can't acknowledge that they make any. One of Blair's employees said, said, once said that Tony doesn't do doubt. Well, if you don't doubt, you can't reflect. And if you don't reflect, you can't think. The Trump victory has been a blast of fresh air through the overblown, self-aggrandizing institutions that many ordinary citizens long ago ceased to believe in. The news is now us. It's online people discussing and reporting as things as, as we find them. And it's not a cachet of experts from the corrupt MSM and universities. The fact that the BBC sent a hundred woke delusionals from its staff to motivate and advise the Kamala Harris campaign, that went well, didn't it? Shows that our mainstream media is of course as delusional as the US. I guess those BBC lovers on the transatlantic, all expenses paid, jolly, advise uh, Kamala to do exactly what the BBC does, which is ignore the wishes and likes of the population, plug diversity and equity at every possible moment, dumb down all news and factual programmes, ignore what's happening and promote a left-wing agenda and assume your audience is stupid enough to still listen and watch. 
But sadly, we're not on the same track as American voters. BBC viewing and listening figures like Channel 4 the, the, uh, and, and readership and advertising for newspapers like The Guardian are all declining as more people wake up to the lies uh, uh, and the, 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 these patronising institutions which hate their own country are fostering and a, a, a hatred for their own indigenous population unless they can be seen as victims and ethnic minorities. So these, these, these institutions are declining, but slowly, nothing like the sea change in the US. So I think we need to crank up the pressure on these institutions and on the educational system so that the failure and collapse they so richly deserve comes sooner rather than later. Another difference between the UK and the US is that in our last election, we had little choice. The Tories had to go, but Labour could only be the disaster some of us knew it would be. Yes, there is Farage and reform, but you can't really compare them favourably with Trump. Trump formed alliances. Look at the voting figures, blacks, Jews, the more tolerant, radicalised, uh, unradicalised imams, the, the, the working class, middle class union people. He had the knack of appealing to, to all those groups in significant numbers while still sending out tough messages to awoke corrupt media and to illegal migrants. Farage could learn from this. Don't alienate yourself from significant voting groups, except that a broad church is the only possible way to election victory. And I'm not sure he can do that. Which means that many, many of us are a bit politically homeless and we need a talismanic figure of the stature of Trump and his team around which to unite. Someone who can rally us all into reclaiming our nation. If you like, do please share and subscribe. And I put some links in below to, to other things. Thank you.